Hi, children. I'm Uncle Joe, and we are here with me today is Auntie Ivy, Chacha Priscilla, and Chacha Aris. We are here on Good Friday together with you to worship the Lord. Hmm, it is good that you're worshiping instead of out playing in the park or with your computer game. For that, turn around and give yourself a pat on the back. Go on. Okay, now I'm going to do another thing. Go to your papa and mommy and give them a big hug. Go on. It's Good Friday and give them a big hug. Great, great. Hey, you, quickly, yes. Great. Okay, shall we sing the first song? The first song we're going to sing is about love. Okay, are we ready? He says, For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have everlasting life. We celebrate Good Friday today because of what Jesus has done on the cross, His finished work on the cross. Yes, today we remember Jesus as He is crucified on the cross. But more importantly, we want to remember the meaning of Jesus. Why was he crucified on the cross? He did it because of love. The love for you, the love for me, the love for the whole world. That brings us to sing the next song. Did you know that someone loving you, he lives in me and other people too? Did you know there's someone loving you? He lives in me and in other people too. Did you know he died on a cross? And did you know his name is Jesus?
Shall we pray? Father, we thank you and we praise you given to us, Lord. When you die on the cross, when you die on the cross, you carry the sin of the world and you complete the finished work of God's salvation and redemption plan. So, Father, today we come to you in worship and we want to pray that, God, you are our Father in heaven and hallowed be your name. We pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, children. Hello, children. My name is Auntie Shirley, and I'm a teacher of KFC. I'm very excited that you have tuned in this morning to KFC session to learn more about God. I pray that our time of learning together will be a great and intimate encounter with God. But before we continue on, let's take this time to pray and ask God to be with us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today that we can come together to learn from you and from one another. I ask that, Lord, you would just soften our hearts so that our hearts will be ready to receive your word, ready to respond in faith, even as we hear your word today. So we commit this time onto your hands. We ask of your blessings and teach us also that we can continue to hope in you, even in this COVID-19 uh, times of uh, uncertainty. We thank you that you are our loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be wondering, it's Friday. Why am I tuning in to watch this KFC class? Because it is not my usual KFC Sunday class. What's so special about today? Do you know what day is it? Did you ask your parents what holiday this is today that you get a day off school home-based learning? Or perhaps you already know that it's Good Friday. Yes, you are right. It's Good Friday. Do you have any idea what Good Friday is? Let's take a look. Good Friday is not just a public holiday that I get a day off from school. It is also not just a Christian holiday like Christmas. It is also not just a special day on the calendar or it is not just something to do with God because it has everything to do with God. It has everything to do about God. It has everything to do about us. It has everything to do with us. There is more to Good Friday is. Let's gradually unfold and unpack what is Good Friday and what's so good about Good Friday. Let's watch a video clip right now. And as you watch this clip, I want you to ponder over this question. What is God speaking to me? Okay, let's take a moment to watch this video right now. That same night, Jesus was on trial before the Roman leader, Pilate. Even Pilate didn't want to kill Jesus. He hasn't done anything to deserve death, Pilate said, exasperated. The crowds, whipped into a frenzy by the leaders, just wanted to see some blood. Crucify him, they chanted with maddening anger. Pilate decided to give in. I'm going to give you what you want just to keep the peace. But I have nothing to do with this. I wash my hands of it. The cruel Roman soldiers were only too glad to oblige. Jesus was whipped mercilessly, leaving him bleeding and wounded. They mocked Jesus, hailing him as a king. Then they shoved a crown of thorns on his head. They spit at him, hit him, slapped him, and made cruel jokes. Jesus, silently suffering, did not retaliate. 
He was like a lamb being sacrificed. He was indeed the sacrifice, dying for the sins of the very people who tortured him. The time had come. Jesus would be nailed to a cross. He was forced to carry his own heavy cross until he fell from the pain and exhaustion. Jesus was so weak that a man named Simon of Cyrene ended up carrying his cross to the top of Golgotha. There at the hill called Golgotha, which means hill of the skull, Jesus was crucified like a criminal. Hanging on the cross for all to see, two thieves hung beside him. This was no place for the Son of God. Jesus' hands and feet were nailed into the cross. The soldiers hoisted the cross into the air, and Pilate hung a sign above his head that read, Here hangs Jesus, the King of the Jews. The religious leaders were furious about this, but Pilate refused to remove the sign. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, the entire land was plunged into darkness, even though it was the middle of the day. Then, before Jesus died, he cried out with his last breath, It is finished! Jesus breathed no more. A low rumbling erupted from all around. In Jerusalem's holy temple, the mighty curtain that separated the holiest of holies was torn in half. Many knew that instant that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Before evening, right before the Sabbath started, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for Jesus' body. He prepared it for burial and placed Jesus' body in his own new tomb. He then rolled a large stone in front of the entrance. Guards were stationed outside the tomb to make sure that no one came to steal Jesus' body. The religious council knew Jesus said he would rise again. They wanted to prevent that. Jesus had to die to appease God's wrath towards sin. But this was not the end. Jesus would be resurrected after three days to defeat death and sin forever. Children, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. But it's not so much of the enjoyment of watching the video. It is much more than that. Remember, I asked you the question to ponder over. What did God speak to you through this historical fact of Jesus' crucifixion that you have seen in the video? Parents, if you are watching this with your child, you may want to hear from your child later what they have learned. And it will be a great opportunity for you also to share with your child what you have learned. There are some questions that are provided for you to discuss and explore in the Bible study notes where you can download using the link given to you. I encourage you to interact more and dwell deeper to talk about what Good Friday is and what's so good about Good Friday. Children, if you are watching this on your own, you can do your own reflection and write the things you have learned about God and about Good Friday on the journal or on the Bible study notes provided for you. I would like to share with you four simple symbols that will give us a good summary of what Good Friday is. You too may use these four simple symbols to share with your friends and your family members who do not yet know Jesus about what Good Friday is. The first symbol, which is the heart. This symbol answers the question, what is this love? It says God loves us. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, Here is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world. He sent Him so we could receive life through Him. Good Friday is good because God is good. It begins with God. God loves me. God loves you. And to prove His love for us, God sent Jesus, His only Son, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be his children. But there is a problem. There is a great divide between us and God, a gap that separates us from God, and therefore, we cannot experience God's love. The divide sign answers the question, what is this gap? What is this problem? Sin separates us from God, and from the life God intends for us to have. Doing things, your own way is what the Bible calls sin. 
Murder is sin. Stealing is sin. Telling a white lie is a sin. Thinking bad thoughts about your friend is a sin. There is no such thing as big sin or small sin. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that everyone has sinned. No one measures up to God's glory. And sin has its consequences. What is its consequences? Romans 6.23 tells us, When you sin, the pay you get is death. But God gives you the gift of eternal life. That's because of what Christ Jesus our Lord has done. It says the pay or the wages we get for our sin is death. We deserve the punishment. Just like the two criminals you saw in the video clip, they deserve the punishment because of the crime they have committed. But our sin does not stop God from loving us. It provides us the solution for our sin problem. And what is this solution? The cross answers the question, what is the solution? Jesus died for us. You saw in the video that Jesus took our place on the cross more than 2,000 years ago, bearing all the consequences of sin upon himself. Jesus died, but the good news is three days later, he came back to life again. Jesus, through his death, has brought reconciliation between us and God. John 3.16 tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Also, 2 Corinthians 5.19, part A tells us, God was bringing the world back to himself through Christ. He did not hold people's sins against them. It is through faith that Jesus, I mean, it is through faith in Jesus that we can experience God's love daily and receive eternal life. One of the criminals at his last hour, if you read in the book of Luke, he puts his faith in Jesus. He said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise. But as the other criminal did not do the same, instead he mocked Jesus and he rejected Jesus. What about you? What about me? The last symbol, which is a question mark, it answers the question, what is your choice? What is my choice? We must decide, will you choose by faith to receive Jesus or choose to leave your own way by rejecting Jesus? Jesus is knocking at the door of your life. He says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I will eat with that person and they will eat with me. Can you hear Jesus knocking? Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Would you open the door to invite him in to stay? God has already done everything to show us how much he loved us. Through Jesus Christ, he offers us eternal life. If you do not have Jesus in your life, and you would like to ask him in today, you can talk to God directly in a prayer like this. Dear God, thank you for loving me and wanting the best for my life. I realize that I have been living without you. I am sorry. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I want to trust you and I ask you now to come into my life to be my Lord, my Savior and my friend. Let me experience your love and help me to love others. Amen. I will repeat this prayer again, now a phrase at a time. If you want Jesus in your life, you may repeat this prayer after me. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed, let us pray. Remember, if you want Jesus in your life, you can pray this prayer with me right now. Dear God, Thank you for loving me and wanting the best for my life. I realize that I have been living without you. I am sorry. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I want to trust you. And I ask you now to come into my life to be my Lord 
my Saviour and my friend. Let me experience your love and help me to love others. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me, please, we want to know. Let us know by asking your daddy or mommy to send a WhatsApp text to your teacher. Jesus promises in Hebrews 13, 5b, He says, I will never leave you. I will never desert you. Jesus promises to come into your heart, to come into your life, to stay. A new relationship with Jesus is also a new journey of knowing Him. I want to encourage you to regularly read the Word of God, the Bible. And parents, I encourage you too to have regular conversations with your children to talk about how the Word of God is relevant and applicable in our daily lives. Good Friday, it marks the day when Jesus was crucified almost 2,000 years ago. Today, we celebrate and remember Jesus' death on the cross for us, a day that we are grateful and thankful for. Good Friday is good because of what Jesus did for you and me on that day. He died on the cross to take the punishment that we deserve. Our sins are forgiven, and through Christ, we are reconciled to God. Good Friday is not the end of the story. There is yet another exciting news to come. Tune in on Sunday for more exciting news and adventure. Children, just now I told you that we have prepared Bible study notes for you that is available for download in the link that has been given to your parents. These are lessons that can help you dig deeper into the Word of God. And parents, please do this alongside with your child if you can. There's a section in the Bible study notes called Journal of Julius. And I want to reward the child who can give an accurate and inspiring account to Julius with these two manga books, Manga Genesis 1 and Manga Genesis 2. Parents, please help your child to email the completed section by this Sunday on Journal of Julius to Pastor Jack. That's the email address given. You can follow this email address. It is also written on the Bible study notes. So when your child is done with that uh, study, you can email to Pastor Jack by Sunday and she will decide on who's the winner. I hope you have um, really enjoyed the Word of God through the video as well as through the four simple symbols. Um, and today, even as we close, I want you to think about the things that you can be thankful to Jesus for. And this day is really a day of celebration for us Christians. As you ponder over the story, as you ponder over the questions, take time to just thank God for what He has done for you more than 2,000 years ago. Let us pray as we close. Dear God, thank you for giving your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that He came. He walked with us on this earth. He who is without sin took the sin upon Himself. We deserve the punishment, but Jesus died on our behalf. We want to thank you for the act of love that Jesus has demonstrated for us more than 2,000 years ago on the cross. This day, as we remember Jesus' death, I pray that God our hearts will be grateful our hearts will be thankful. Thank you for eternal life that you have given to us through Christ Jesus. Lord, as we continue on this day, I ask that it will be a day of reflection for us. We thank you for hearing our prayers and I ask of you that you give the children and the parents a good time as they explore your word deeper. We thank you and I pray all this in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in to listen. I hope to see you again on Sunday. Have a blessed and restful Good Friday. See you again.